talking about people complaining <laughs> there's a really really interesting and thought-provoking interview here courtesy of dweller um an electronic let's just get the actual about page here so i can make sure that i'm not quoting them out of turn da, 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 da. this says here dweller Dweller Forever Writing, what's that? Yeah, Dweller Forever Writing from a Black Perspective. Dweller started in 2019 as an electronic music festival platform, um, electronic arts, and this is a derivative blog started in 2020, centering on the Black ex perspective, right? So you kind of get the gist on what they're doing. They're providing a safe space, a publication platform for artists within the dance music scene, especially, I guess, techno and trying to boost the signal of some of the black acts in there because i guess especially if you're looking from a european perspective a lot of the media out there's a bit whitewashed in it so there is a uh, an avenue there is a space for this platform to exist especially now with the conversations post george floyd's passing there's definitely an appetite for a more diverse um uh, platform that's providing you know um uh, that's highlighting some emerging acts or maybe some actual story that's that may be overlooked but regardless um i like some of the articles i like what they're talking about but i think this um article here a conversation with lsd xoxo the process of waiting to excel in the black techno revolution kind of triggered me in some way shape or form especially off the back of you know watching the larry levine documentary and what basically he was able to do during some really really tough times in the 70s and 80s to see people sitting here and essentially complaining about not being included um given the amount of resources that we have available and access and whatever it may be is a little bit disingenuous but again who knows let's read some of the questions and answers and then we'll kind of go through some of my opinions regarding it where is it da, 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 da. where is it it starts off somewhere here i think at the bottom ba, ba, ba. we got mixtape working on much i've been working on my choreography it continues here where is it it gets really interesting towards here at the bottom da, da, da. yeah so there we go it gets around here mm -mm -mm. okay cool so uh the, 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 so it says yeah frankie um obviously one of the head honchos from this woman asked um lsd xoxo the following question i mean it's crazy how much black artists in new york are putting on putting out into the world and he replies it's just like a real resurgence in black dance music it feels like because of the social climate right now we actually have to take ownership of what's ours white artists just really stepped into dance music and took over of course there are some great white artists and i'm thankful for what they contribute but to have to but you have to understand you're a guest and we as black people have to understand that we're not necessarily the creators of everything but even though we kind of are but we know when the space is not ours white producers and musicians don't really have that they don't know when to grasp it they're existing in a space that they did not create i feel like now because we've been able to speak up and share our experiences it's becoming really exciting like all the black artists i know are just beginning being a lot more explorative with their music and also there's just no holds back it's just like we know the black people are the creators we know our shit is good and we don't have those fucking glass ceilings that we had before like we have a lot more space to work with now of course you know some of the tricking bits are this idea of sort of like scene or genre ownership is always a bit weird to me and always kind of not really sat right in my head um you hear a lot of people using that phrase about you know other races being guests within your set, set musical genre now i know this kind of mindset exists everywhere reggaeton which is ironic considering the name um reggae music um country music hip-hop r&b there is a certain thing where like the if the if the prominent race of that genre see others outsiders coming in there's obviously a bit of a pushback that's completely understandable but there is a part of me that's sort of disappointed that that happens in dance music especially when you think of the sort of unifying um nature of clubs and dance floor and music in general right especially when you consider the amount of references and genres that dance music pulls from you would hope that there would be a bit more unity and a bit more of a um kind of raceless uh perspective when it comes to dancing on the dance floor but of course i know life is more complicated than that it all can't just be this you know um raceless and um, utopia where we don't see color but you know that's something to kind of uh stipulate and kind of throw out there as a kind of prerequisite to sort of set the tone of for the entire conversation 
and it continues here frankie asks i mean it's really thinking about now about the amount of glass ceiling black out his face and he replies everyone in music is just like a gatekeeper it's like the cool thing to be is a gatekeeper why has it become so cool for music to be like this elitist thing it's because everyone who's running it is a white person <laughs> pretty much every genre of dance music has created a political movement mm -hmm. as a way to get you to step away from colonialism and capitalism and now those have become the deciding factors like what's hot in dance music where are the opportunities at of there's an element of gatekeeping in in any industry i think that's where innovation and creativity comes from i think if you're not facing some level of opposition and some level of pushback in the genre or area that you want to pursue it probably isn't worth pursuing so i wouldn't really read too much into that and again there is a part of me that also thinks the barrier of entry in dance music it's extremely low as long as you've got the money as long as you've got the access to the venues and equipment you can effectively put on a party just about anywhere especially if you've got the audience and the customers or the community willing and able to travel and pay to attend your events you can kind of cultivate your own little scene pretty quickly it continues here da, 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 da oh it says yeah um, european second and then says of um, lst for his following this is the, the it's the main culprit about european the touring circuit yeah since i've moved here in europe of course like of course i realize that the glass ceilings and stuff that happens to the states but i've grown to appreciate the states so much because like there's just a natural sense to me more vocal and talk about things that are opposed to just trying to skirt around everything yeah they don't like the conflict so they can't resolve anything which is true i do think there's an aspect of like avoiding the tough conversation i think in the uk we have this issue even here with the um with the lack of i guess yeah with the weird way that we kind of approach door picking right you go to i think i mentioned it previously you go to a club in brick lane and you're a group of five lads doesn't matter what color or race you are probably might be increase your chances if you happen to be white and wear skinny jeans and say all right mate and your you know sleeves are you know your arms are covered in sleeve tattoos but for the most part it's pretty difficult for a group of boys to get into most clubs within i'd say central london towards the central east central sort of area right up until dawson it's really difficult most places i've got this set my idea in the head that groups of boys are just gonna immediately cause trouble so there's discrimination that way and there is also this weird sort of thing where there's a lot of segregation in terms of like scenes the hipster scene the commercial scene the tech house scene the this scene the underground scene the warehouse scene there's a lot of real there's lack of kind of um blending of the communities especially when you consider the punters that go are generally sort of going for the same sort of thing right um dance uh, get high get drunk meet new people but there is a lot of kind of separation in that regard and some of it is manufactured or some of it is sort of orchestrated or architect by the industry itself right by this prevalence to maybe push out certain voices push out certain people push out certain faces certain colors and creeds but again i think even though it could, it can be a lot of sort of barriers i do think the opportunity is also the fact that you can essentially as long as you can sell tickets as long as you can you know um uh, get a lot of people to spend money behind the bar you can essentially put on your own thing and sort of avoid all the issues that exist out there in clubland but it, you know but you then end up creating the same kind of click that you're sort of running away from but hey what can you do it continues um she says this icky, cranky says it, it's quite hostile actually he says yep yeah. I've had blowouts with people here in Europe, of course, you mentioned in Berlin, I think, because he lives there. He said, I've gotten into it with so many of the people that I worked with in the past in Berlin because you have to teach them how to work with black artists, how to work with an artist that's not come from their same background. That's extremely, um, that's an extremely broad, generalized statement. But again, you know, I'm, he, this is what you're going through personally, so I can't object to it. He says, you have to respect the art that comes along with it. It's not just about bureaucracy and business. I respect both sides of music as well but if you're just focusing on that stuff it's just like what's where's the meat where's the fucking meat i don't even eat meat but i, but I want it in the music he says living in berlin has been a different hassle for me but the time has come to move here was a good time because like i actually feel like i had some sort of say in the things i had my power just because people know who i am from the last release i'm able to utilize that so i can get my foot in the door so i'm trying to get my body in the door so i can hold it open for other black eyes which is great that's what you want to see and again you know living in berlin i guess you have access to some of the best 
or maybe well-connected agencies out there, um, some of the best venues, people that really care about the music. And as long as you have the right support system around you, there is an opportunity for you to kind of reach a wider audience and ultimately get to a level where you can sustain yourself as an artist. Because I think there is obviously a lot of, there are people who come into dance music, especially DJing, um, uh, wanting to sort of you know conquer it all and be the person with the most list of gigs on RA and be well regarded win awards and whatever it may be but most people I'd assume myself included you get into it because you just want the respect of your peers you want to be able to command a decent amount of following a decent enough of a following and also just have a career where you're not able you're not kind of having a point of position where you have to work a part-time job if you're able to, those needs are able to be met you're going to be pretty happy I'd assume especially you know you sprinkle in some collaborations and remix work with people that you actually love and rate maybe an opportunity to maybe bring up or kind of help some other kids come through like that's basically what you want and if that's the case berlin is definitely the great place for that to happen of course there's going to be the other side of the coin where there's going to be a lot of you know opportunistic um you know um social climbing heads but i think all in all, from the times I've been there, and especially, you know, you know, I'm not somebody else well connected. I'm just a raver and a DJ who just happens, you know, to go to Berlin like every year to have a bit of a dance. I found it a pretty easy place to kind of make some connections. And I've only spent, you know, the best part of what, a couple of weekends there every other year or so. So I can imagine living there, the opportunities and the doors that are open can be amazing. It continues um he says here uh, frankie says yeah these clubs need to keep their doors open which is funny he replies and says the clubs in berlin they love a queue and they love a closed door i'm not shitting on berlin i've had a lot of opportunity here because the government actually does respect artists and respects what we contribute to society in america the artists are looked down on and we don't provide anything it's a bit self-explanatory there it continues says but it's also like what the people think they listen to and watch people are consuming are and constantly but there Where's the other thing I was going to say here? I think that was interesting. Let's skip along here. Um, where is it? The, 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 the. Yeah, so Sprankie says the following. says, I mean, it's really weird. And it's like, we really have to just be treated like fucking shit all this time. And it's like a crime, honestly. And let's do replies. It helps you to realize this. Not only have we been treated like shit, we've been given the shit end of the stick constantly and really in a space, in a genre that we created and also how unbothered they are by everything. It takes the piss. We've gone through so many struggles this year as people and I just watched the people I've associated myself in this past year and a lot of them are so oblivious to the issues outside of their own bubble, which I can understand why that can be frustrating for sure, especially if you're more politically and socially active than some of your peers trying to bring up some conversations because at most of the time as well there is a little bit of a difference i think in europe than there is maybe with america there isn't there is a reluctance to talk about politics openly especially hot button topics like race discrimination um social and economic inequality it's just not things that you just casually bring up and it's always going to cause a little bit of a rift you know whereas in america you do get a feeling that they sort of like fire from the hip a lot more often especially you know in a um in a you know in a trump presidency presidency world there is maybe a bit more of an onus put upon you know sharing your opinion and making sure the people you're speaking to know that you're not voting for the orange man bad but again i would say that experience probably is true and it's probably distressing but i would say there is a real opportunity for people like frank and lsd to maybe lead the light and you know take some of these experiences and sort of use them as a opportunity to uh provide a space and a safe haven for artists and people that they want to represent especially in a place like berlin right you would assume especially with the amount of people outside of the mainstream doing the underground scene out there who are really pushing things forward you look at there's this channel called widows collective that i follow online on youtube that does some really interesting streams of some underground artists that you probably haven't heard about so definitely check them out obviously they got the um h-o-e-r i don't know if you pronounce it hua or how however you pronounce that word um they they have one of the probably the best online djing you know radio stations that exist out there in berlin pushing out some really amazing people they book anyone from ellen alien to you know somebody that you haven't heard of from the local scene so there are opportunities and i really would it really is a shame that there isn't a space specifically 
um, out there in Berlin that's catering towards representing voices that aren't necessarily represented some of the bigger clubs. That's the issue that I think in that regard. And I think she makes a good point of it here, actually, Frankie, about Bergheim. That I was actually thinking. Let me see if I can get it here. Da, da, da. Bergheim. Let's see if I can find it. Where is it? Oh, she, oh she, maybe she took it away. Names, is it? Naming names. Da, da, da. See, where is it? Yeah, there you go. So, okay, she changed. She, maybe she didn't write the name properly, but there's a question here. She makes a good point, right? So, you say, um, uh, so Frankie says, do you think, um, Berkine is going to come back swinging with an all black lineup, which is something I've sort of thought about a lot, especially during post, you know, lockdown. Oh, sorry, during post uh, COVID, during post George Floyd's passing, sorry, um, it kind of you know brought us some very interesting conversations around representation, discrimination, blah de, blah blah, in various industries. And I do think there's an opportunity, especially for a place like Berger, and to maybe lead the charge and sort of set an example. Unfortunately, dance music, like a lot of industries, is a bit me too and copycat. -y. So as long as one person is setting the tempo and sort of showing you how things can be done, other places can do the same thing. You know, the whole sticker on the phone, the whole um, no pictures on the dance floor. The whole providing a safe space for queer LGBTQ folk. Bergheim sort of at the forefront of doing that, and other clubs around the world sort of take some of the lessons learned and pro and sort of outlined in their club and apply it to where they are. So the hope is if Bergheim come out and say, "Hey, we're gonna just set example, and we're gonna commit to having a couple of nights a week be specifically for black and you know brown DJs or people that kind of aren't necessarily fall into the box of just being the commercial run of the mill people that you'd see on an Awakenings lineup." I think that'll go a long way. Now, for me personally, would I necessarily like being booked under the premise that i'm only there because i fill in a certain racial quota probably not but if that's an opportunity for you to get your voice out there and provide you the platform to amplify your message amplify your sound then so be it especially when it's an institution like burkhine right you can kind of put a little bit of the cringe uh uh classification of yourself to one side in the hopes that your career can get the boost that's needed now if you're a white artist and you haven't got any looks at any place because again i think a lot of those things have to do with network i remember listening to an interview on djs and beers recently i forgot who the guy's name is he's one of the um recent episodes where he was essentially talking about an incident that happened a few years back maybe maybe more than a few years back with um what's his face richie horton supposedly got banned from Bergheim for a set period of time because he got a little bit too larry behind the dj booth and that's when i found out as supposedly in the Bergheim, there's a rule where if you're playing you're not meant to have anybody no if you're not playing you shouldn't be behind the dj booth basically it's sort of to eliminate it's the complete opposite of the whole dc tenor beef for crowd thing right there's always a cohort of hangers on in the dj booth trying to look important but Bergheim are like hey if you're not playing you can't be behind a booth I guess this guy and Richard Horton are there. Richard Horton's playing before him. Richard Horton stays for the other guy's set. And I guess they get a bit rowdy behind their back. They have a few too many shots and things get a little bit larry. And Berger and staff and the higher ups don't like it. So they ban both people. Um, so much so that that guy is still from one of the, the guy that played after um, Richard Horton hasn't played in Berger since that date. Right. Of course, he, he mentioned that the booker at the time who booked him has moved on. And they've got somebody else in place and they obviously have their own favorites and their own people that they recommend. But even that dude who's, you know, as white as they come, he's never played in Bergen again. So I wonder how someone like that would feel when they see a lineup that is essentially um, catered to all people, mostly based on the number one criteria being the color of their skin and less so about their ability to DJ and command the crowd and, you know, make them dance, all that good stuff. So that's where the issues come in. Now, again, is that short term pain for long term? Is that short term um what's that thing called what do you say short-term conflict for like long-term gain yeah but you can see where the issues arise but lsd's reply here is really interesting this is the following he says i mean if we're saying names i feel like white owned clubs haven't established themselves as institutions just have their power that really can't be infiltrated and so even after all these conversations have been had they're only going to be held to so much accountability and therefore if they're not actually being held accountable they're not going to change and if they can continue to 
um, have these all white lineups and still make hundreds of thousands of bucks, they're going to do that. I'm pretty sure they're talking about awakenings again because they're, they're kind of, you know, known for that. Why would they um, want to fuck with the formula? I'm sorry, but I just don't think they care enough. Like, you don't care enough. That's just it. You need to leave black people working in all these places because you need somebody who's going to care. That I can understand the need to have maybe more black voices in there, but much like the conversation going on at the moment with um, Anna Wintour at Vogue, there is a part of me that thinks, especially again after watching this Larry Levine documentary about the Paradise Garage, I really wish a lot of this conversation was steered towards a productivity in terms of, hey, we're going to provide a solution for some of these um, pushbacks and barriers and obstacles that we face for our entire career in dance music and just go and create your own club that kind of addresses all these um, injustices. And I think if this issue is something that's poignant and a lot of people have been feeling it it'll be absolutely booming can you imagine what it would look like if they set up a nightclub in berlin that was essentially highlighting some of these voices that aren't represented in some of the bigger lineups out there imagine what that would look like imagine what the clubbing landscape would look like in five ten years when that place is established and they've gained a little bit of notoriety that would go a long way in terms of changing the entire patina the entire color schemes of festivals and where you go out and it doesn't doesn't take much i know for myself like you know i was somebody that was very much against the whole 50 50 gender splits on lineup but you have to be honest when you go to a festival or a party or a nightclub it has a lineup where they specifically cater where they specifically make sure the lineup is um you know um evenly balanced there is a different ambience a different feel when you know somebody behind a booth isn't the typical bro playing for his bros behind the decks or playing for his bros standing next to a speaker there's a different feel having those different voices definitely adds to the overall depth and texture of a night and again would you rather your nights be representative of the people on the dance floor or just representative of the stuff that only you listen to for me personally I'm representative of the people on the dance floor people that actually back what i'm doing and again i'd love to to be a little bit more of a progression in the conversation because these issues we know they are there but where are the solutions where are the people coming up and making their own things i always and i still maintain i have this plan and this goal in my head of kind of long-term goal of opening up my own space and my own club where i can kind of essentially provide a space for my friends and from this the sound that i like to be basically promoted but i wouldn't want to necessarily be um told to book no i wouldn't want to be forced into booking people that i don't want to book just because it doesn't just because it, the people that are pushing for it feels if i'm not addressing their needs i think a club should be kind of led by a voice a scene a tone or whatever it may be and it should sort of kind of address and maybe cater towards a different you know a different a, a set that demographic a set community but then again if you don't like that set community what you then go and do is set up your own club nights or set up your own label set up your own whatever party series and try and push those people forward and then obviously the hope is people like myself that have, would have the club will be like oh that what you're doing is a pretty good let me insert as what i'm doing and go from there but kind kind of going into establishments or institutions and sort of forcing them to bend a knee and to kind of acquiesce to your demands and to kind of uh, represent the music that you want isn't necessarily the most productive way to go about it i think i don't think that kind of leads to compliance as you go in there pointing fingers and telling people hey you gotta do this do that do that whatever it needs to be a bit more of cooperation and again if the cooperation doesn't work you just go out and you make your own but regardless i think it's a good article a pretty good thought-provoking one generate a lot of conversation and hopefully um lead to some actual um solutions that a lot of us you know myself included punters can benefit from but definitely check it out it's on dweller electronics it's called a converse in conversation with ls lsd xoxo the process of waiting to excel which is out now is mixtape so definitely check that out and the black techno revolution i'll put the link in the show notes <laughs>